Welcome to Live Talks, a podcast by Live, a tech and logistics company headquartered in Abu Dhabi. On Live Talks, we tackle fintech, logistics, business, and best practices in the workplace. I'm Karim Bakhash, the VP of Strategy at Live Global, and I'll be your host. Welcome to a new episode of Live Talks. Today's topic is going to be about instant commerce and more specifically vending machines. My guest today is Zubair Abderrahman, who is the founder and CEO of Fresh Now. Zubair, if you want to introduce yourself before we start. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Karim. Um, my, as you said, my name is Zubair, so CEO of Fresh Now. And uh, I did my schooling here, so I'm, uh, I, did, I spent a couple of uh, years here in Dubai. And I wanted to make, create a change when I do business. So that's the reason I entered into the instant commerce, into smart machines. And that's what Fresh Now is all about, refreshing people. And we have a mission to make the UAE citizens and the residents healthier. Great. Okay. Interesting. You called it smart machines, not vending machines. <laughs> yeah, you will good. know. You yes, you will know in the coming uh, <laughs> that that it is a smart machine. Good. Yes. I mean, the topic is a bit interesting. Uh, the first time I heard about it, I thought, wait, are vending machines still around? Because you know, with technology and things, you know, that evol- evolved with home delivery that came very, very popular, you would think that you know these machines that used to be out there would disappear with time. Uh, I remember from my old, you know, younger years, you know, these machines were all about snacks and coffee. That's typically what the vending machine was all about. You put some coins, push a button, you hope it doesn't get stuck (laughs) (laughs) or you start punching it. Yes, yes, yes. And then, and then, you know, things, you know, evolved and you kind of forgot that these existed. You see them in some places, you know, schools, hospitals, you know, see those vending machines. And I thought these things kind of died down, but... I learned that, you know, things have evolved and actually there's kind of a new boom of, you know, these, what you call them, maybe smart machines but now. And I read that, you know, there's all kind of things that are being used as an instant commerce way. So from, you know, whatever you're offering, which you're going to be talking about, I'm sure. But also I saw like a fresh, uh, there was one place that was offering fresh bread, some places were offering gold. So there's all kind of different things being tried. So very interesting. I'm really looking forward to talk about this topic with you. Maybe let's start, you know, the basics about kind of the different types out there, or the demand on vending smart machines, the latest trends. Let's start a bit broadly and you can talk about what you guys are doing, of course. Let's go back to 1883. Oh, wow. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's the uh, that's when the first modern vending machine was uh, invented. Okay. And uh, they used to sell stamps. And stamps, okay. posters. And then came uh, the gum uh, machines. And, and then uh, they suddenly started uh, selling soda. So the technology kept on revolutionizing the vending machine uh, industry. And in fact, our famous uh, investor, Warren Buffet, also started his first business with a vending machine. One of the business he had was okay. vending machines. Um, if you look at it, uh, the, the, as you said, that there are a couple of uh, vending machines. And what is the, what did I, when I said, smart machines, there's a transition from vending to smart. So what vending is, means is uh, you fill a products, you fill the products in the vending machine and your customer comes in, you pays, he puts a coin, credit card, whatever. And then he gets dispensed of a product, a product dispenses. And that's what it is called vending machine. Whereas the, why do we call ourselves as a smart machine is because we don't vend products, we make the product there so it's a process it's like a factory where you make a product so we we, we add oranges in it and then it cuts squeezes and cu- gives you a sealed pack with the freshness in it so that is why we call smart machines and there are many many smart machines like the one you mentioned french fries as well as there are burger machines there are pizza machines and uh, there will be many, many more. And to do not forget the coffee machine. So basically coffee machine is also doing some process, but the fresh is different because it's not easy to maintain the fresh uh, because a lot of uh, things involved in it. And that's what we do at the moment. 
I saw one when talking about the coffee. I saw one in Emirates Towers. I don't know if you've seen this robot that's doing like fresh coffee from grinding and then mixing it. You should check it out. It's actually very nice. You put a still. You need to put a coin, or I think you know you pay with your phone. You don't really need to put coins. But also, it's trying to do what you say, like smart, not just the coffee mixing, normal, just powder yes. with water. Which is the, yeah, the usual think, one. Yeah, I think that is uh, replacing the human with a human with a robot. I correct. think. Yeah. So that's correct. that's why if I'm if I'm correct what what you're saying, but uh, yeah, that is about the. There are many many applications which will come and in the future, it will be the uh, one of the future of uh, the industry. So when when we started in 2016, I searched in Google, which is the t- most trend uh, business uh, in 2015. And I found vending machine was one of them, one of the 15th ones. So it's got a future. And if you ask me what is the current market size? Now, for for example, uh, the market size is about $7 billion in uh, 2021, expected to reach $19 billion by 2028. And there's an interesting fact as, you know how many vending machines are there in Japan? There is one machine for 23 people, 5.5 million vending machines in Japan. Trying to remember when I went there, but you're right. There was a lot of vending machines. It's very, very popular there, and they, they do they do dispense quite a lot of things. And I'm not sure if it's smart or just normal vending ones, but I th- I remember you're right. There's a quite a lot of machines there. Is it cultural or is it just like future trend? I think I am. According to me, maybe it is uh, the future trend. And as Japanese, they they don't want to spend too much time. So because the entire vending concept came because of the convenience factor, right? So they right. don't want to go to a store, spend the time there, and then you know sp- spend on gas or whatever. So they can they can save that time and efforts in in getting the food. Well, how does it compare? I mean, maybe just kind of a question that came to my mind now. Um, you might tell me I don't I don't really know, but still, um, how does this compete with home delivery, right? Because you know people are now kind of very I don't want to say lazy, but they prefer to stay home and wait for something to get to them. You know the whole thing about dark stores and you know the fifteen minutes delivery of grocery, which is turning out to be not very profitable and very solid economically from what we see in the in the ecosystem now but still people seem seems to tend to stay home to wait for something to come to them are we fighting consumer habit by telling them there's a machine downstairs just go and pick up what you want or is it complementary together they're working it will be uh, it will not fight because we are giving if you look at instant commerce it's about, it's all about instant you need to get your uh, products immediately and and also fresh right as you said it is not economically profitable i know it one, in one day in some in the very near future either they have to pivot they have to use machines like ours rather than dark stores in order to provide this kind of service. Yeah, so the future you're saying is we're going to be replacing dark stores more and more with maybe kind of some of the machines. Because, Absolutely. Because this will be more economically feasible. Yeah, what happens when I did my research on uh, groceries, delivery of groceries, and it is that human tendency that they want everything in their bed. Correct. Not even home. Almost, you know? yeah. So they uh, they tried it in in the United States hundred years ago, and they failed miserably. And by even with the adoption of technology, they they are still trying it and they're still failing it. That is the only reason why Amazon bought uh, Whole Foods, right? For so much of million dollars, because they want to be near to the consumer. If you're not near to consumer. Of course, you will not be able to make any profits out of it because you know how life is being a part of that. So how our instant commerce technology or smart machines can help, it can actually help the delivery by integrating our machines as a dark store. And instead of going five kilometers away, you can just go 100 meters or 200 meters and then the delivery guy can just pick it up and then deliver. The cost of delivery will be much, much, much lesser. Okay, so now what you're saying is actually it's the machines will not only be used by end consumers to go to the machine and pick up what they want, but also by delivery people that can go and use these as dispenser for what is being ordered. Absolutely. So what we have seen, if you ask me, is your machine a dispenser? I said, no. 
It's a production unit. And it's on, not only an instant production unit, it's a production unit which will cater to the people who will place orders online, people who will sit and drink the juice in a restaurant or a cafeteria or a coffee shop. Right. Okay. Even that will come from these machines. Okay. okay. So that's Here. a transition from Here. an e-commerce to an instant commerce. Interesting. Because uh, there was a lot of talk about uh, quick commerce at some point. Now we're talking about instant commerce. Good. I mean, it's progressing for in some direction. At least if it's economically feasible, it's fine. Because what we've seen at the Q-commerce is some of the models are not economically feasible. Absolutely not. Let me give you an example how it would work. Let's say if I have 500 machines all over the town. We have about 10,000, 20,000 buildings, whatever. So we have these machines, one machine for four to five buildings, okay? okay? Walkable distance, right? So you don't need bikes anymore. You'll be one person who will go to these machines and deliver to these buildings. He will get the orders on the phone, mm. all right? He still needs to use live services. Maybe yes. he'll be employed by live, you know? So he will just go to these machines and deliver it. Only for the people who are, because the culture here is delivery. If you look at, uh, in, the, in the Europe also is shifting, by the way. They want delivery, even if it's in the front. Earlier correct. it was not like that. Correct, correct, correct. Okay, but then maybe, uh, and then I'm, I don't know if I'm jumping up and down in the yeah. discussion, but yeah. still, how do you cater enough SKUs in a machine to be able to cover what somebody needs to order? Because, you know, there's, I don't know how many, but there's a substantial number. How can a machine do that? Is it just limited to the ones that are the highest and most frequently ordered? You can, if you ask me about my business, it's only one, one yeah, SKU. Yeah, correct, right? correct. Let's talk about grocery, all right? I've seen a, a container in uh, Europe, okay, where you can have uh, at least 700 to 1,000 SKUs and 10,000 products. And I'm envisioning, if I have the money, I would I would do a complete grocery, whatever you get in a mini, mini mart or a grocery, small groceries, which whatever the products that you need on a day-to-day -day basis, I can have that in a container outside a cluster of four or five buildings. And this that's the different uh, way of doing it, wherein, let's say you are in the office and you want to go home. So before you go home, you place the order. You place the order and then this, this container, this machine will make the order for you and keep it ready. You just need to scan your QR code, take your product and then go home. That's number one. Otherwise, you're at home, you want a delivery, you just make the order and the delivery guy will just walk to the uh, this machine and then takes the order and delivers it to you. So the, the products can be, we can increase, we can build the machine depending upon the products. Okay, interesting. Um, uh, I mean, the concept seems to be evolving as we as we continue discovering this. It's this. there in my head, but then... <laughs> <laughs> so what are the challenges then? I mean, if you, I mean... Is is then is the challenge installing new machines everywhere, or what, what is usually the challenge in such a model? That you there have? are multiple uh, challenges. Uh, if you look at uh, the, there are four challenges. Okay. Four categories of challenges. Okay. One is the f challenge from a consumer, because we are not in Japan. Because Japan, there's no challenge in terms of awareness of the people how to use the vending machine. Will they lose the money? Blah. blah, blah. But here, if you look at the consumer, they're afraid of using the machine because they might say that they will lose the money, right? right? Okay. And then there is, uh, and second, there is not known brands who are, the machines are not branded properly, unlike right. Fresh Now. If right. you see Fresh Now, it's all already branded. Right. And, and then you have hygienic issues in the machine, if it is mm. fresh. They think that, it's a perception. Right. And how do we solve it? Now, Fresh Now, how Fresh Now has solved the issue of awareness that the money is eating. We have a 8 to uh, 12 o'clock. We have fairly uh, good customer service. There's a toll-free number. There is a, there is a WhatsApp and multiple media. You can reach to us. And the benefit is that we will fix the issue. 90% of the problem is fixed immediately. And then we have a technology where we can enter into the machine, control the machine, and give dispenser juice for you, which not, not many of the many machines has that. That's why we call it ourselves smart machines. Right, right, right. And that's one. And then then you have uh, the issue with hygiene. We, our machines auto-sterilize and sanitize within by uh, two times a day. We can have set it up for four times, but then it's not required since it is uh, already the temperature of the machine is five degrees. And 
the uh, sanitization and the, it's and it is orange so orange is actually an anti uh, correct bacterial correct correct so we are we are fairly highly on hygiene right and the awareness must be created so we are trying to create awareness create having more number of machines earlier you know we had uh, we started with 12 machines and now we are about 68 machines good interesting okay so we talked about challenges number one was the yeah, uh, the perception consumer we talked about hygiene what else you said is yeah is the second challenge. one is the challenge with three, with getting the locations right? right okay now the there is also a challenge there to get the right location because we are disrupting the industry so people are not they're very very reluctant to uh, keep the machine in the shopping malls for instance uh, but we managed that through over the over the years we kept it in government locations rta metro stations wherever we had a chance and now uh, we have created a profile where we can enter into shopping malls and we have grabbed some prominent uh, shopping malls at the moment you will be able to see it very soon okay so location is always an issue. Is it because, because I've seen some of those, uh, the one, the most common I've seen in, the, in some of the buildings is the noon machine now. I've yes. seen a noon machine more and more popping yeah. up in buildings. I, I haven't looked what's inside it, to be honest. I, I don't know what they're selling. Is it actually, eco, is it like products or grocery? I'm not sure. I didn't even look into it. But They have the noon lockers, I think. Which, the, those noon yeah. lockers are separate. No, ah, there was okay. like a vending machine ah, of okay. noon. I think noon grocery, something. Yeah. 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 So, so these have been popping up and I'm not sure how much they're being used, to yeah. be honest. Uh, but is so how would that work in locations? Is there going to be too many vending machines, like too many smart machines in one location next to each other? Noon, Amazon... Fresh now, like is it is it that what's going to happen? More and more of these machines are going to be everywhere in the future. Yes, it's okay. going to be machines because people don't want to uh, interact with human beings in sense for small small things. Right, when you need a human experience, of course you need, but to get a product you don't need that, right? Which is your daily products. Right. So it will be uh, in the in the near future. Definitely, we'll have more many machines. And the third challenge that we faced was uh, with regard to uh, payment systems. Right. Yeah. So the regulatory framework was not set in. So in the last three years, we've managed to uh, change all our machines into credit card acceptance. You can even pay with your Apple Pay. And we have wallet. So right now, it is uh, we are. That was a challenge which we overcome. But then when we started, we had that challenge. Really, you had to put cash. It was we still had to cash. put cash, and then we oh, had to wow. take out uh, the cash. And uh, still, we do have cash. Yeah. But then uh, our majority is credit card at the moment. Good. Oh, yeah, because people don't really have cash anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> less and less. I forgot my wallet today, but then I'm, it's okay because I have my Apple you Pay. You have so. your phone. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need really to. <laughs> okay, and let's talk now about kind of uh, technology because I know, you know, we work together uh, using technology for online ordering, which is connected to your machines. For uh, So that is one side in terms of using technology that connects with consumers directly. So the consumer can order the order goes to the machine. The machine can dispense, uh, make the, the the juice, and then somebody comes and pick it up and takes it to be delivered or if they pick it up from the machine itself. So that's clear. This technology is there. What else is happening in technology or maybe AI or anything that is new? See, the technology since to, to operate a food vending machine or a food smart machine uh, you need to have data and that data must be instant data okay real time right okay. uh without that i wouldn't st start the business so in 2016 when i started that that time itself our vending machine was equipped with the iot where we could enter the machine and get most of the data all right and we could uh, restart the machine we can we can give the juice we can change some settings you know, all these things was happening and still happening. Okay, we want to do more. So what happens is that if there is any problem with the machine, we will know. So we'll send the team. When the sale is more, we will know. Then we will send the team to replenish. It's not like unlike un other vending machines, you just stack it. Even if it's, uh, uh, even if there is no, there, there won't be much issues also because it is not a natural product. Correct. It's just uh, uh, cans and cans. And then if you, if you're buying one one snack, okay, you have another snack. But for us, it's very important that we need to have that technology. So this technology is very important, and that's why we we had that. And, and 
our competitor, I don't want to name them, then it was a bottle juice company, right? So they ran a couple of vending machines and they didn't have the telemetry system. And it was a, it was a nightmare for their operations. So having uh, technology is very important. I'm thinking one of the important thing is the replenishment on okay, my head because yeah. I, I still remember these old machines where you'd get to the machines and half of it is empty because the guy did not come to Correct. replenish it. Yes. Because probably he doesn't even know it's empty because he only why. comes on a regular basis and that's it. Uh, maybe once a week or once every few days, but you, he doesn't know that there's no more chocolate or there's no more juice or whatever. You're so. right. Yeah, that's the, that's the, that, that issue is not there with us. We have... Uh, almost zero downtime with regard to replenishment. Okay, sometimes there is downtime because of uh, some technical issues. Maybe the orange gets stuck because some orange is slightly, because it's not like tennis ball, you know. So yeah, yeah, of course. Different. Of course. So uh, that, that that's the reason without technology, it is uh, Im- difficult to run this business. Now, coming to your uh, future trends of technology. Now, what this technology can do for us is one is the e-commerce. So when we... When you place an order, it uh, the the order goes to the rider. Like for instance, with Fresh Now and Live, it goes to the fre- uh, live rider, and he goes to the vending machine. He makes the juice, and then he delivers it. Right. right. So uh, similar applications in India, they do uh, they do they consider it as a dark store only. It's kept in somewhere, but it's a dark store. It's not even uh, available for public. But what happened? They place the order, and it they go to they go to the vending machine, take it, and then deliver it. Okay, so an integration of technologies, I can give you an example how technology can change the way people purchase and especially convenience stores, right? Now you want to sell a cigarette at two o'clock in the night. Somebody wants to buy a cigarette uh, and then he goes to the vending machine. Today, vending machine cigarettes are not sold because of the regulatory thing about 18 years or 21 years, whatever. And then he goes there and then with the AI technology, he can understand your age Identify your age, and then you can dispense the product if it is for you. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, he can check. Uh, he can check who you are and who and you then, are. What is your and age? And then dispense whatever you you're asking for, depending if you're allowed yes or not. Allowed yes or no. That's right. So you can't fake it. So that's the technology which can come in the future. All right. This is the future trends. I'm just giving one example. There are multiple applications where you can have. So I was just trying to think about all the current application I've seen. You know, fresh fresh is is actually more difficult than the other ones because the other ones are you know products that you don't really need to worry if they're fresh, yes or not. Um, I, I I go back to the example. I've even seen one that dispenses books, yes, which is very interesting in the UK. They have them in train stations. Yeah. If you want to buy a book at any time, there's like a dispenser of books. So it's always things that are more dry and not fresh it's things that don't have a problem of perishable items uh, what you are pushing is more to go onto the fresh side which are things that are delivered to you fresh which has its own challenges as you said of making sure that you're sanitized you're fresh latest um but how do you what is where is the the the, the line in there i mean is it does it mean that we need to push more and more fresh things on those machines because this is the trend that what people want because people want more and more fresh things and not the snacks because this is this used to be what it was yeah. now what you're saying is the future is to get something more fresh of course and we want to align with our vision you know our vision of making people healthier so we are we have a purpose so we are ready to take all those challenges on our head to make sure you get the freshest juice available in the planet. Right. Yeah. So uh, keeping that in mind, we are also starting to have uh, bottle juices in the future through vending machines, through smart machine itself. And it'll be available all over the town. Uh, Because today you have only one option, which is orange juice. Many people want multiple options. We cannot, unfortunately, there's no machine to make a mango juice, for example, or a or uh, an apple juice machines are coming up this year, by the way. 
and sugarcane juice also we will be launching it this year mango juice is a bit difficult i think mango the fruit is, is i think the fruit yeah. is a bit difficult to it's cut it's very difficult let's yeah. say you want a banana shake for example or a or a detox all those things so what will happen is that we in the future we will supply these uh, bottles in these smart machines because we know complete data instant uh, we have we are connected wired so we'll be able to maintain the freshest so our objective is to currently if you go to any uh, convenience store it's about 3 days right the shelf life correct our objective is to make it 12 hours so the moment it's produced within 12 hours it'll ha- it'll be in your stomach so that's the plan interesting okay maybe looking may more future and um, i don't know if we've covered some of it but how do you see this evolving as we continue this evolvement of smart machines in general i, I know from yeah. your end yeah. You're talking about, you know, fresh juice, bottled juice, different type of juices, yeah, which yeah. is, I mean, yeah. it falls always in the making people healthier. Where do you see the trend going in general? As I told you, uh, the 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 larger machine, which can handle more number of products, like instead of going to a convenience store, you know, one of the future trends will be drive through Right? drives through with a with a machine. Yeah, you just know you don't need to get out of the mach- get out of your car. Which, by the way, our fresh now is uh, eligible for. I mean, we already have a drive through machine. We okay. have not installed it yet, so we are waiting for the. So we have the one who have created the first world's first outdoor vending machine for orange juice, and it's a drive through. Okay. Uh, so there will be a drive through machine wherein you can pick up your orders you can pick it up from your uh, car itself whatever you want and it will be a large machines which can give you which can cater all the needs of a consumer without getting out of your car so when you're coming out from your office just go take your stuff and then go home so the cost of uh, distribution is much 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 less very very less if you're looking at life uh, through your riders it's the last mile cost is huge compared yeah, yeah of course it's huge but here you you create a habit of people taking it but then they don't want to get out and go to a store and then waste their time you know so i prefer as if you ask me i prefer to go to a machine and take it rather than he coming into my home because he's going to uh, it disrupt what i'm doing at home right so that is some people think like that as well so you take it and then you this is the future trend and do you think do you see any differences in trends in the world like globally have you seen things differently so you mentioned japan of course which seems to be a bit more advanced in having those machines but other than japan is there anything that you see the trends is different uh different in the sense the india was never uh basic it wasn't uh, there were no machines in india i mean the industry was not that it did not even start i didn't have i've never seen a vending machine in india in my place okay but now it has started so it's a there's a baby boom of uh, machines in india and uh, that will there's a huge future huge market in india especially we are th- thinking of having our machines in the train stations inside the train as well so indian railways is huge yes it's huge and then that's where you need a machine because when you're tra- you're traveling you need something to drink you need something to eat this is this will solve that problem what i'm trying what i'm trying to envision now while you're talking about all these smart machines is we are moving from these also these machines that used to be for only specific things which mm-hmm. were snacks and sodas at that time and coffee to kind of micro micro markets of machines yes so meaning you know you're doing fresh juices another one might be doing i don't know pizzas another one could be doing something else but the whole idea is to give options to the consumer for instant commerce yeah um where wherever they need to get it this could be in the case what you said is a is a train yeah but it could be also in any of the malls or any, any of, of the, the yeah. places yeah so what th- th- those trends i've seen in italy so there's a called a vending corner so you have a small shop and in that you have multiple machines multiple things like you have a coffee machine and you have a snacks machine water machine and uh, even wine beer all those things were there i think i've seen them also now that you're talking about them in other countries i'm not sure if it was belgium or or netherlands but there yeah. was also these places open 24 hours yes. which was only vending machines it was food yeah so there was like a corner of burger and a corner of pizza 
and you don't have anyone. There's just somebody on the back who's just cleaning and cleaning taking and care, then yeah. yeah, and just putting back any any missing food that that they need to put. Yes. And I'm assuming this is very low cost to operate of because course. there's no one no yeah. one in there. Yeah. Okay, so good. That will be one of the trends coming up. Very good. So we talked about the future trends and you know what you know we can see in the future. What does it take for somebody to start such? Because it seems to be an attractive business and, you know, somebody could decide, oh, maybe I should start having some smart machines around. Yeah, uh, we actually get about three to four inquiries a week saying that they would like to start this business. People think that, you know, they can just buy one vending machine and put it and operate it and make a lot of money. But actually speaking, vending machine is not less than any other business. You need to have a marketing, you need to have a proper warehouse, transportation system, and then salespeople, and then accounts, everything must be there. So if you want, if you're, if anybody wants to enter into this business, it is a serious business. It is not a second uh, time pass business, right. unlike in, in US. And if you'll, you'll not be making money also, because here it's regulated. Every, every activity is regulated. And you must have an office, you must have a warehouse, you must have your own cars, you need, you need to have uh, all these uh, uh, infrastructure. And in order to make some money out of it, you need to do it in scale. So when I talk scale, for me, I think it should be a minimum of 100 machines. Right. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's not like a small... 50 to 100 machines. 50 yeah. to 100 machines to make right. any dent into kind many of... Many dent into that because you have a lot of fixed cost. So it's uh, if if it is if you're okay if you're getting a a franchise model where the company is operating then it's fine you can invest in that and then at least you can do your basic local marketing and then but if you're doing doing your operations yourself especially for fresh and for food you must have uh, quite a few machines and if it's for snacks and you may be a little bit lesser machines but still you need to have at least thirty plus machines. Good. Well, listen, it was a pleasure having you here. Thank you for uh, coming to the two live talks. Uh, I hope that was good for you too. Yeah, it was uh, indeed definitely a pleasure to be with you, Karim, and then uh, with live. And thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. That's all for live talks and see you next time. Mm -hmm.